Um, I am uh, I'm the youth pastor here, for all that don't know me. I'm Pastor Larry. I am the pastor of the teenagers, the young folk, the young, young folk. All of us young, but they the young, young folk. Amen. And uh, I am honored to uh, be behind this pulpit tonight. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Praise God. I love you, and I believe God got some good things for us tonight. But before I get started, I want to make a few announcements. Healing School is every Tuesday at 1030. Here at 1030, every Tuesday. Corporate prayer is every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock back in the detour room. 9 a.m. in the morning. Prayer will not be held this Thursday, okay? And then... Um, and if everyone would please update their information at the uh, media desk, we'd really appreciate that. Just fill out that form, and uh, it helps us keep up, keep you informed by email and all that other stuff, you know, when things change. Amen. And we got some great conferences coming up, October the 8th through the 9th, the Ladies Fall Conference with Candy LaFlora. Praise God. That's going to be awesome. I'm going to try to slide in on that one. Uh, it's going to be Friday, October the 8th at 7 p.m., and then Saturday, October the 9th at 10 a.m. And then October the 10th, her husband, Pastor Stephen LaFleur, would be at 10 a.m., okay? And then October the 25th through the 30th, we're going to have six days of faith. Six days of nothing but getting the word about faith. Get in the word about something that can change nothing into something. Amen. Get in the word on something that can take an addict and make him a preacher. That's what faith did for me. God is good. So the six days of faith is going to be intense, teaching solely on faith. Designed to bring the hearer to a higher level. So bring your supply. Come with a leaning ear. Incline your ear to hear. Amen. And uh, your life will change. Amen. So if you love God, say, Jesus, I love you. Praise God. I am, uh, I got a lot of stuff up here. Let me get rid of some of this. I am uh, going to talk now about the Lord's tithe and your offering. That's a good place for you to say amen. amen. So let's go to Malachi chapter 3. That's house scripture, one of them. And uh, I'm going to tell you a few stories about where I was and where I am now. So when I met my, my wife, I was with my dad, who's gone on to be with the Lord now. I had, um, I was on a, just a little history, God delivered me from crack addiction and alcoholism, okay, and being homeless. So this time that I was with my dad, I was taking a, a, a brief, uh, you know, I, I took a break from that, <laughs> just put it like that. And um, I had taken him to the gas station because he needed to gas his car up, and he had, you know, he had a couple of strokes. I said, yeah, dad, I'll take you. So I'm standing there paying for the gas, and you can see out the window behind the cashier. And this lady gets out of this car, a gold Oldsmobile. She gets out the car. And I'm like, who is that? And she walks in the store, so I've, I'm now following. I'm like this the whole time. She walks in the store, and I turn around, and I'm looking directly at her. The cashier is back here. And... Uh, so we exchanged numbers, and long story short, um, we ended up getting married. That's a fast, fast version. I ain't going to take you to all that other stuff, that mushy stuff. And um, so I go to the VA to get some help. That's what the Lord directed me to go through, my mom. And uh, I got a job, and she came to pick up my check. It was payday. She came, and she said, I'll be here to 
when <laughs> at 12 o'clock when you get paid. I said, okay. So she came and she took me to the bank and she said, are you going to give your tithe? I said, give my what? She said, give your tithe. You're going to get God his 10%. I said, well, I really don't know much about it, but whatever you think I ought to do. She said, well, here, here's what I do for you. She said, I'll just come and get your check and give your tithe for you until you get comfortable <laughs> with giving your tithe. I said, okay, that's fine. In the meantime, I owed the federal government thousands of dollars. And it came time to file taxes. She said, are you going to file taxes? I said, no. She said, why? I said, because I'm not going to get anything back. <laughs> Duh, you know. <laughs> and she said, no, honey. She said, you got to do what's right. And she said, besides you a tither, just file the taxes and believe God. I said, okay. So I did it. I got a check back. It wasn't but for a few hundred dollars, but that was God showing me that he was honoring me, obeying him, and bringing him his, which is a tenth. He didn't say bring 30%. He said bring 10%, right? People want to argue over 10%. But 10% changes your financial address, Right? So 10% took me from not having enough to having more than enough. Amen? And not only that, it says that the windows of heaven are going to be open. And he's going to pour out a blessing. Now that blessing covers your whole life. Financially, physically, emotionally, however you need the blessing to work for you, it'll work. Glory to God. Well, I needed money. <laughs> but still, at the same time, I had a, um, a condition with my heart because I had done so many drugs. I had a serious heart murmur. And my wife said, hey, you know, the tithe works for that too. I said, it does? She said, yeah. She said, you know, he's going to open up the windows of heaven. She said, ain't no sickness in, in heaven. Hey, man, I was a baby in Christ. I didn't know. I just, I jumped on. Whatever she said would work, I tried it. <laughs> Amen, because I wanted a change. Amen, I wanted a change. I saw what God was doing in her life, and I didn't, I didn't have to take any medicine or none of that. I just believed God, and I went back to the doctor. I, I didn't have no more heart murmur. I didn't have any more tachycardia. So God is just, the first year I got saved, he's just showing out. I mean, the, 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 got rid of a debt for me, healed me of a heart issue. Amen. So, but I was still having this money issue. You know, back child support and all that. I just put God on it all. I did. I said, Lord, I said, this out of my hands. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. And you said you would do this for me if I trust you. Gave me favor with my ex-wife. You know that's God. The people said, hey, if you go and talk to her and she come down here and say that she wants to drop it all, we'll drop it all. So I talked to my wife and she said, go and do it. And sure enough, she went down there and did it. That's God. Amen. So he will open up the windows of heaven for us and pour out us a blessing that we don't have enough room to receive it. Well, what do you do with the part that you don't have enough room to receive? You give. You sow. Amen? You give and you sow. So we are blessed to be a what? Now, how many of y'all know that there are people that don't know what we know? There are people that are lost. There are people that are hurting. There are families that are broken apart. There are children that need their dads. There are children that need their moms. There are moms and dads that are addicted to drugs. There are people that need healing in their body but don't know that there's a healing God that wants to heal them. Right? Well, how are they going to get that? How are they going to hear that? 
unless the gospel is sent. How are they going to hear unless somebody goes? How are they going to hear unless the message gets on the airways and goes to California, goes to Mexico, goes to Ecuador, goes all over the world? How is they going to hear? We're going to send it. We're going to fund it. Right? Whatever your measure is that you can help fund the gospel, be cheerful in funding it. Your measure is nobody else's business. If it's five dollars, be cheerful in that measure. If it's five G's, be cheerful. The five G's is five thousand for those that don't know. Be cheerful in that measure. Amen. Because God says, give with a cheerful, prompt to do. Amen. Are y'all still here? Okay. So, Third John two says, "Beloved, I wish above." All things that you may what? Prosper. And be in health even as our soul prospers. <laughs> so prosper is to grant a prosperous and expeditious way. <laughs> Glory to God. That's the goodness. Led by a direct and easy way. Okay. Proverbs 10.22 says the blessing of the Lord it what? Make it rich and there's no sorrow added to it there's no toiling i'm going to go to my job i'm going to do my job with the excellence of the lord i expect to be promoted i will be promoted i expect a raise i will get a raise amen i expect to have favor i'm going to have favor why? Because I have changed financial location. I'm obeying God by bringing him his. I have bring, I have bring, I've, that's a new word, y'all can say that. <laughs> I, I have brought my, my uh, seed and I have sown. Amen? So you can expect the goodness of God to be poured out upon you. Let's go to Luke 6.38. I have given myself a name, another name. I am a money missionary. I am a money missionary. Now, see, I got this from Agape because when I, was, when I was, wasn't able to give like I give now, I dreamed of giving big, and I still do. I dream of purchasing airplanes. I dream of paying for churches. That's just in my heart. Amen? So I have to allow God to increase me. My thoughts have to get in line with God's thoughts. My actions have to be in line with God's actions. I can't be financially, emotionally ruled. Which means when I go to the suit store, I don't buy every suit that I see. I'm not an emotional spender anymore. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. Because the first thought that comes to my mind when I see that, I was like, hmm, do I have something like that? I do. And am I going to wear it? And, you know, I could probably sew that at church. Are y'all still here? Y'all don't get quiet. See, because God is okay with us having things. But at the forefront of my mind is how can I use this money? I like to eat. I like to dress. I like to drive. All of those good. Amen. Ask anybody that know me and have invited me over to their house. <laughs> Amen. So what did I ask you to go to? Did I tell you to go somewhere? Luke 638. Let's go there. Matter of fact, let's go back up to, um, you know, when they give you glasses, they're supposed to work. Um, okay, let's go up to verse 35. It's getting ready to get real deep. Y'all ready? But love ye your what? And say it, come on, y'all. Y'all can say it. But, but love ye your what? And do what? 
and do what? Yeah. Hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be what? And ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Woo! Okay, Lord, let me, let me get my thoughts with your thoughts. That takes some developing. Amen? That takes some developing. Next verse. But be ye therefore what? Merciful, as your Father is also merciful. Next verse. Judge not, and you shall not what? Condemn not, and you shall not be what? Forgive, and you shall be. Next verse. Give, and it shall be given. Unto who? Me. How? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with this you shall be measured unto you again. So we are assuming that it's a great measure because I have cleaned all that stuff up before this verse. Do you understand what I'm saying? All this stuff before this verse I've cleaned up. I, it's clean. Lord, I'm expecting my money to overflow because I love my enemies as I love myself. Hey, y'all looking at me like, I, I know it's by faith. Praise God, we live by faith. We love by faith. Amen. Give and it shall be given unto you the Jason's Deli scripture. <laughs> get under that thing, just let that ice cream just run over. It's overflowing, I know it is. You know, get all on your hand, down your wrist, run up your sleeve. <laughs> and it's good. <laughs> Praise God. So if you would like to give, you can. That should be an envelope in the back of the chair in front of you. You can text to give to 28950, and you can follow, follow those prompts. You can also give online. There should be um, somewhere online you can give. I think it's, um, I forget what it is, but you can give online. And we have some opportunities. Now, what an opportunity is, is something of choice, which means, okay, Lord, I'm going to get involved in this. Because I know that this is about somebody else. I know this is about somebody else that don't know me like I know you. But I need you. So I'm going to get involved in that. Right? Project 2424. 2414. Right? This goes all over the world. All over the world. And we're. All, I'm just. I call it paid off. We're there. We're fully funded. Right? By faith, we're fully funded. We need $35,351 to reach our goal. Praise God. Then we have word supply. We got anything for word supply? Look at all this money we've sent out in supplies. Free. 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 That's so people can know Jesus. So people can know there's a better way. Amen. Amen. So if you will, stand to your feet. And you can come rejoicing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Testing, praise God. We good? Praise God. All right, so tonight, now just, just help me out here. How are we supposed to live? By faith. by faith. So we're supposed to live by a super supernatural force. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to live by a supernatural force. 
that comes from a supernatural God. Amen. So anything that this force comes against should lose. Amen. That's the reason he says in 2 Corinthians, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, please. I just want to establish our stance from the beginning before I get a little bit into this. So no matter what comes up against us, we win. Say that. No matter what I face, I win. Say it again. No matter what I face, I win. Now check this out. Now thanks be unto who? God, God which always, when does he do it? Always. always causes us to triumph in Christ. So we always triumph in Christ. Not in us. In Christ. Jesus got rid of everything, did away with everything, that would cause us not to triumph. Did he not? So that is important because we see that God is leading us. This is another version I wrote. Forgive me. So we must not rehearse the problem that is facing us. Amen? The problem that is facing us is temporary. Do you believe that? It is temporary. It is subject to change because we are working with a supernatural force from a supernatural God. Now, put your seatbelt on. I'm going to say something. A natural person cannot receive a supernatural force. Amen. It takes a supernatural person to handle a supernatural force. Because a natural person wouldn't know what to do with a supernatural force. So what am I saying? I'm saying that you're supernatural. And we get into trouble when we try to act as natural folk. We, we can't act like natural folk. We're weird. I mean, who else? would think they can talk to something and expect for it to change. Weird people would. Us. <laughs> Who else can say to a mountain, be ye cast into the sea, and the mountain goes into the sea? Us. Natural folk don't believe that. Amen? Only supernatural people believe that. Nothing can take you out unless you decide to be taken out. No sickness, no disease, nothing can take you out unless you desire to be taken out. Do you desire to be taken out? I have the victory. Come on, repeat now. We, 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 we do a lot of this in detail. I have the victory. Oh, every sin, every sickness, and every disease, every joint pain, every back pain, every knee pain, every headache, every sinus infection, every type of infection, every kidney disease, every stomach problem, in Jesus' name, all my joints work properly, my fingers, my toes work properly, my elbow works properly, my neck works properly, my muscles work properly, in Jesus' name. And anything we didn't cover, it's covered. Amen. That's how we live. But now, when? When? Now. Now, thanks be unto God who always gives, causes us to triumph over sickness and disease, poverty, debt, and lack. That's who we are. You ever had a big brother? I had some. 
too many, I think, but I had some. You know, you get whooped on a lot. You get to make you do stuff you don't want to do, you know. Then I had four older sisters on top of that. Mercy. But anyway, it's good to have a big brother because a big brother would go and make a way. I had big brothers that would go and threaten other little kids that I had problems with and come get me to go handle them little kids and I didn't know it. So I'm over there thinking I'm doing something, but they've already went and handled it for me. That's what Jesus did. He went and cleared the house. I just had to show up. We just got to show up. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When sickness comes, no. My big brother took care of you. I'm not having anything to do with you. You leave my body. I'm healed. I'm whole. I've been redeemed from you. Amen. Psalms 107 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So what are you saying? I'm healed, Ralph. I am rich. I, I'm rich. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine. That's another house script in the pastor run. Let's put it up on the screen for me, brother. We're going to look at it. Y'all with y'all rich self. Yes, I receive it too, sis. Yeah, we rich. Say that. Lift your hands. Say, I am, I am rich. rich. I am completely supplied. Completely abundantly supplied. Completely filled. Rich, rich, rich. Hallelujah. For you know that the grace of your Lord Jesus Christ. Now, grace means what? Favor. So his very best on our behalf. His very best on our behalf. That though he was what? Rich for your. Your am I. See, there we go. Our sake, he became poor that through his poverty, we might be rich. Now, that word might means that there's something that we got to do. We got to partake of it. Yes, Lord, I am rich. I am rich. Remember, we got to show up. We got we to show up. He's already done this. So I got to show up and be rich. I got to show up and be rich. I got to show up and be healed. I got to show up and be completely filled, fully supplied. I got to show up. Hey Amen. I got to show up. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm not going to be sluggish. I'm not going to. I got to show up. Hey Amen. Say that. I will, I will. Show, up. show up. Praise God. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 31. God is a good God. He never changes. So faithful. Hallelujah. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We need to remember that. Now we're talking about the same God that formed everything. From nothing. Well, it wasn't from nothing, but he formed everything. That's who that's who's on our side. That's who's on our side. See, I'm really simple. Because. When I face a challenge. I. Quickly and without hesitation, go back to when God delivered me from the streets, when he delivered me from drugs and alcohol. And that seals it for me, right? Because there's no way that he would bring me from there and let something else overtake me. He loves me too much to do that to me. He wouldn't do that. So when I look at that challenge, I laugh. Now, what I don't do, what some people might do, is wonder why it happened. I care nothing about why it happened. I just know that it has no business dealing with me. 
Amen. So I ask the Lord what I need to do to get this on his way. The first thing I'm do, I'm not, I'm no, you cannot stay here. We had sickness hit our house, and I'm gonna tell you, I was weak, but the enemy didn't know it. Right? Told me I had that that virus. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But see, the day before, well, weeks before, I had been spending time in the Word on healing. My body was good. I, I didn't, I mean, but I was, I was getting fed food. And when it happened, it didn't knock me off. I said, okay. My wife got me in the truck. We went down to Kroger's. I was praising God the whole way there for about 30 minutes. Took about that long to get the medicine. I got home. She said, you need to rest. I said, okay. She knew I wasn't going to do it. But she said, okay. I said, okay. She said, now take this medicine, eat, lay down, rest. I said, okay. I didn't get in the bed. I put on some word. And I sat in the chair. I said, if I go to sleep, I'm going to sleep in this chair. I'm not laying in the bed. The next day, I got up. I went and got on my spin bike in my garage. It's hot. Man, I was sweating. And I had some Chicago Mass Choir on. And I was getting it. <laughs> right? Just praising God because I was praising God that I had the strength to get on this spin bike and do this. At this time, fighting this sickness. Right? But see, I'm an overcomer. I'm more than an overcomer. Right? Next day, got up, went and cut my yard. Yeah. Sister Angela texted me and said, Isaiah 54, 17. I said, yes, sis, I know that's right. I just got off my spin bike. And the whole time now, I'm telling, this, I'm telling this body that you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are not weak. You are not feeble. You are strong. Amen. Verse 32, please, Richard. Or wherever, yeah. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for who? How shall he not with him also what? Freely give us all things. All things. Whatever you need to live a life that is in testimony of God has already been freely given. However you want to drive, however you want to live, however you want to dress, however you want to be built, it's freely given. Yeah. Just because you, and I, I don't say this without any, I'm not trying to be funny, but just because you're up in age don't mean you can't hit that gym. Amen. If that's what you want to do. Amen. 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 Man, I, I, and I went to the gym. Right? Because what? We are strong. Say that. I am strong. In the Lord and the power of his might. Now, God in all his goodness provided you and I with a supernatural force. I, I'm just repeating myself. That is able to overcome anything. First John 5, 4 and 5, please, sir. So you are a supernatural being in possession of a supernatural force. Y'all agree with that? For whatsoever is born of God, are you born of God? Does what? Overcomes the world. Say, I overcome the world. Well, what's in the world? Sickness, disease, poverty, debt, lack. I overcome that. Amen. Do you agree with that? And this is the victory that what? Overcometh the world, even our faith. So now it's twofold. Not only do I overcome it just because of whose I am, but my faith with it. You ever been double teamed in a fight? 
Man, that don't feel good. So when we apply faith, it's two. Right? We got, I used to tell people, well, they used to say, you know, that's, 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 that's Benny Clemens, boy. Don't mess with him. You know why? Because while my dad was soft-spoken, he didn't play about you messing with his kids. God don't play about his kids. Amen? He has set us up for victory. Can I get an amen? amen. Romans 12, 3 says that God has dealt to you and I the measure of faith for victory. Amen? The God kind of faith that speaks to mountains and to mulberry trees that are in the way. Speaks to mountains. And have you just went out and spoke to something? I have too. I had them flowers and stuff. I love, I love, no, not love, I really like a lot being out in the yard. And, play, and, and I talk to flowers all the time. I said, now you, you line up and grow. I've watered you. I've gave, gave you miracle grow. You grow. Go out there next day looking real brave. I don't sing to him now. My wife has me sing to him. I ain't singing to him. But I talk to him. I remember um, when my son was a little boy and uh, somebody had stole his bicycle. We lived in an apartment. And uh, the bike was, bike was in pretty rough shape when they got it. And I went out to take him to school. And so this, this, is, this is how you need, I ain't saying you need to do it specifically, but train your kids. And um, I was rushing, because I had to drop him off, drop Sarah off, and then I had to get to school. And so I'm running down, so he's like, Dad, 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 Dad. I'm like, what, boy, come on. My bike gone. And he was, his eyes were swelling up. I was like, oh, man. I said, come on, let's pray. So I told him, I said, we're going to pray and tell whoever got your bike to bring it back. Right? You might think that might sound foolish to a kid, but he was on board. And we told Mama, you know, Mama, Mama, you know, she took it to another level. But, um, <laughs> you know, you don't mess with a baby bike. You, are, you, are you crazy? <laughs> and uh, so I was out um, detailing the car. And the Lord said, go out the gate, take a left, take another left. You'll see the guy on the bike. I said, come on, Isaiah, we're going to go and get your bike. He said, we're real dad. So yeah, get in the car. Now, I was saved a short time. And when I got in the car, I didn't hear nothing else the Holy Spirit said to me. So I make the left, I make the left, sure enough, there the guy is. He's just down the street, just whoo. So I hit the accelerator and swerved on him, <laughs> like I was a police or somebody. I jumped out the car. I said, you get off my son's bike right now. Man, he's looking like, no, oh, man. I said, man, look. So I swole up, you know, and the Holy Spirit said, your son is watching. I said, you bring my son's bike back. I don't know. I got this bike. I said, I don't care. I said, you bring my son's bike back to the house. Go tell mama. She going to say, well, maybe we need to pray for him. I don't pray for him. He stole a bike. Well, maybe he don't know. Maybe he don't know who. God. I said. I said. I said. I, I said. Again, I wouldn't say it long, but I was like, I don't really care. I just want Isaiah's bike back. So, she led the prayer. And uh, and she said, um, she said, Lord, him bring that bike back. And t about two or three in the morning. He's beating on the door. God worked on his heart and he bought the bike back. Right? I answered the door. And she said, well, did you pray for him? I said, no, I didn't pray for him. I just got the bike. Right? But what we had spoke caused what we want. We didn't see nothing. But our words changed the situation. 
See, there were things going on with that guy that we had no idea about. So there are things going on with your loved ones that you have no idea about. Just keep speaking. Just keep praying. Right? Well, I ain't seeing nothing. Well, you know what needs to happen? Need to go into praise and worship. Need to go into praise and worship. When I think about something that I'm believing for and I ain't, I, I'm, I'm not seeing it, you know, and, I, and it's been a while, well, what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Praise and worship will keep you while you're believing. Right? Because patience has to accompany faith. It's one of the additives that must be added to faith. Because without patience, you know what happens? I don't know why I ain't saying that yet. I've been believing for seven years and my knee still ain't healed. Well, check right there. Amen. <laughs> the word says that a person is snared by their own lips. How many times has that person said that? Instead, how about getting up in the morning and you might be a little stiff, knee might feel a little gimp, neck might be a little sore. But how about in all of that, you exercise it out, and while you're exercising it out, you sing a worship song, or you pray in tongues, or you stretch, right? Because whatever we do in the natural has to correspond to what we're doing in the spirit. Murmuring and complaining is not of God. All it does is set you back. It's like spinning a wheel. You ever, you ever been on a mud track? And you have to, you just, the wheel's just spinning. Ain't no progress being made. That's murmuring. No patience. Amen? Patience will keep you. It undergirds faith. See, when a, when a per person's faith tends to waver and you go into praise and worship, it'll bring you back into faith. Amen. We were selling that house down there, down the street, 9-11, with all those oak trees around it. And um, I was standing there one night. Pastor Michelle didn't know that we had talked about selling the house. And uh, we just knew it was time for us to move on to you know, something that was going to challenge our faith a little, more, little bit more. We didn't need a house. The house is great. We fixed it up, updated it. But, you know, we need to exercise our faith. So we believe in God for a bigger house. Mainly her, but we believe in God for a bigger house. And uh, so we put the house on the market. No, Pastor Michelle said, well, Pastor Larry, what do you need the Lord to do for you? I said, well, sell my house. Right? I was like, okay, we ready now. Dropped the sign in front of it. Days went by. Weeks went by. Months went by. Years went by. <laughs> but hey, I got to tell you, I dug in. See, patience is a steadfastness. I wasn't going to change. See, because I, remember, I remembered that the Lord had delivered me from being homeless. So in my opinion, that was the worst condition I had ever been in. And if he could deliver me from that, surely him selling his house was no big deal. So I dug in. And uh, the devil would come and say, ha, 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 ha. They came and looked at the house and didn't make no offers. I said, yeah. <laughs> but my pastor came by here and said that this house was going to sell. Hallelujah. And by the fact that you're telling me it's not going to sell, I know it's going to sell. Because you're a liar. <laughs> Glory to God. 
So I would praise and worship God and be thankful. I would be vacuuming the floors and singing praise and worship songs, thanking God that the house would sell. I would drive up to it. You are sold. And uh, this couple came and looked at the house. The realtor was a Christian. And we had our materials out because, like I said, we believe in God for things and, you know, just our personal study time and stuff like that. And he said, uh, he said, do they listen to them? We had Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle, Pastor Philip, and other people out. But he knew of uh, mainly Kenneth Copeland. And he asked our, our realtor, and our realtor said, yeah. He said, oh, okay. He said, well, I'm going to talk to my clients and try to get them to purchase this house. Now, imagine if I'd have been murmuring and complaining instead of thanking God that the house was already sold. See, while that house was on the market, we were having small groups in that house. I had people believing with me. We would have worship in that house. We would share the word in that house. Right? So I knew it was coming. But I had to take a stance of steadfastness and keep this in line with him. I couldn't let, my, I couldn't let it get wicked. Amen? So that the first additive is patience, which is steadfastness. Say that I am steadfast in my faith stance. Glory to God. Now. The next one, oh, I guess I should probably give y'all scripture. <laughs> Let me, let's go to uh, 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 1. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, chapter 1, verse 5. So, you know, you might be believing God for something. You know, you got your faith stand song. It's been a, it's been a while. Well, what do you do? Keep believing. Stay in faith, right? Stay in faith. Be patient. And for whatever you do, don't put a time frame on this. God didn't put one on, don't you put one on. Amen? I, um, I heard Keith Moore say that um, he was believing God for something and he put a time frame on it. And <laughs> he went to God and asked him why it ain't, it ain't moving. And God said, I ain't tell you to put no, no time frame on that. You did that. So he repented and got back in his faith stance. And um, I think it was selling a car. If I'm wrong, I apologize. But um, him and, him and uh, his wife was believing for a car. And the Lord told him, go back. Go back. Get your faith back. Go back. And they went back and got in line with how God wanted things done. And they got the car. Amen. So and besides this, giving all what diligence add to your faith, virtue and to your virtue, knowledge. Next verse. And to knowledge, temperance, which is self-control. Say that I have self-control. Well, what does that have to do with faith? It's an additive. Have you ever had ice cream that wasn't sweet? You can't imagine having ice cream that's not sweet, can you? It just wouldn't taste good. Right? You wouldn't even purchase that. That, that stuff that they sell at diet free ice cream. I'm like, well, diet? Are you serious? I don't want that. Well, these additives make our faith much more effective. Gets you out of the idle mode. No more spinning wheels. Right? So self-control will help us with that. Say that again. I have self-control. So um, forgive me. Let me get my notes here. So it gets you out of a position of being idle. It enhances it. So an additive that word add there means to supply. So self-control brings a supply to faith. 
to make it more effective. Amen? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Okay, so it's an additive. Why is self-control important? Well, you can be believing for something and um, or something shows up and you be like, oh, why does this always happen to me? No self-control. I always, this always happens to no, no. Hey, you, so I tell my kids, they know not to call me whining. It's like, please stop whining. What is it that we need to believe God to do? Because whining doesn't help. Amen. I'm not saying y'all whine. <laughs> Amen. But I know I have whined. Just put me out there. I have whined. But I, I, I quickly repent and get back. You know, say, for instance, if you're um, believing God to get out of debt. Well, you need self-control. Amen. You're believing for healing in your body. Well, you need self-control that, you that you're able to walk in love. I remember when Agape built that family life center over there. I'm telling you all these stories when I was young in Christ, okay? And, uh, man, we'd be over there hooping, you know. I'd be over there showing my skills. And uh, hooping is basketball. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was just used to fighting. I was brought up fighting. And, man, there'd be some guys coming that wasn't saved, you know. And uh, while we should have been, or I should have been, I'm just going to say I should have been ministering. If they, if, they, if they wronged me, if they cussed at me, if they bumped me the wrong way, man, it was time to get it on. Right? And at the same time, I was believing God for some stuff, and I'm wondering, like, why is this not happening? I know I'm giving. I know I'm doing this. I'm doing my confessions. La, 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 la. Nothing is happening. Well, you want to fight everybody that comes to the family life center and shoot basketball. <laughs> you know, you got no self-control. None. You know, your wife asks you why you won't do something. You blow off. You just, you know, your, your son, he can't do anything right. No self-control. Anger, right? But I'm, belie but I'm believing God. I got faith. <laughs> Not a lick of self-control and want God to do something for me. I'm just being real. Are y'all here? Man, you bump me and I'm shooting a jump shot if you want to. We can ready to roll. But, but, you know, I, I had, like, again, when I went to Agape, I got set up with some really nice friends, and I had some, some mentors. Mr. King was one of them. And they pulled me to the side, hey, man, you know, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know, you don't have to fight no more. You know, you can, you, can, you, can, you can love everybody. I hadn't been taught that. See, I, had, I hadn't love. What do you mean? I just love my wife and my kids. Who else wants some love? <laughs> I ain't know nothing. Honestly, I didn't know nothing about that. You know, I hadn't been. I ain't know nothing about love your neighbors yourself. Mm -mm. My neighbor bumped me. We gonna fight. <laughs> but again, I want God to do something for me. That's not gonna work. Anger issues. Not gonna work. Got to add self-control to, to, to your faith. Amen. And okay, now the next additive, and another word, you know, temperance and self-control is just, you can use them interchangeably, right? So not having self-control can make you barren. That don't sound good. Barren, which means there's nothing happening. There's no production. You're idle. And see, be on guard against pride in this idleness. Right? 
I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing to cause this to happen. I know I'm in faith. Well, obviously, some need to, you know, change. Maybe you need to tweak a little something. Right? Because I'm, I'm just being candid here. I'm, you know, I, I didn't really ask him, but he told me. The Lord corrected me. Because he showed me that I was being a little too critical. A little too quick to judge. Oh, maybe I'm the only one. A little too quick to judge. Being critical. And he said, uh, you doing it with your wife? You doing it with your daughter? I said, My heart sunk, right? Because I love my wife, and anybody else do anything to them, they got a problem. But here I am, I'm hurting her, right? My daughter, don't mess with her. You want to go see the maker? That's, you, you can, but other than, But here I am. But, well, you know, it's just criticism. No. God said, check that. So I repented, and I said, Lord, you show me. He said, now, because if you change this, your faith will go to a level, a level to where it's perfect. Another word for perfect is what? Mature. Right? Amen. Are you still here? Okay. Brother Richard, go back to that scripture, please. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, what? Did you say patience? Yes, patience. Say that. I am patient. Oh, forgive me. Um, Richard, go to uh, Galatians 5, verse 22 and verse 23, please. Thought I was done with self-control, but I wasn't. Y'all okay with that, right? We can go back a little and get a little bit more food on self-control. So what is self-control? It's a fruit of the what? It's a fruit of the Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit moved into our heart and into our spirit, it came with it. He bought self-control. So you can develop in self-control. To say you don't have self-control, you can develop in self-control. And it can be challenging because you're dealing with people. You're dealing with people. I'm going to tell you what the Lord did for me. What really hurt me, but I quickly got over it, was that when I, when God delivered me, my, a lot of my family that I looked up to didn't share in the excitement of me getting saved and delivered. They criticized me. They talked about my God. Like, you, God didn't. I said, hey, man, you know, it hurt me. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, that's because they didn't want to change how they saw you. They wanted to continue to see you like they want to see you. But if you're not that, then they have to change how they think about you and how they talk about you, how they treat you, how they see you. A lot of people don't want to change. A lot of people don't want to share in your joy, in your victory. They would rather criticize and poor mouth. We let them go on. The Lord said, don't you go around them for a whole year. You go around your mama and your dad, Denny baby. He said, you go around your mama and your daddy. Don't go around the rest of them. I'm like, Lord, it's Christmas and Thanksgiving time. All that food. <laughs> I'm like, you know, forget about them. I'm thinking about that grub, you know. 
But sure, sure enough. And uh, what it did was it helped me not need their approval. And seeing the whole time, I am increasing in my worship time and my prayer time with God. I'm getting to know him like I've never known him before. And in that prayer and worship time, he told me, he said, I'm okay with you. What you did in the past has nothing to do with you right now. Freed me. Amen. Freed me. But see, they wouldn't let that go. They would not let it go. So <laughs> he said, don't go around them. You can be around the wrong people while you believe in. I just don't hang out with anybody. I hang out with people that believe like I believe and speak like I speak. I am not friends with poor mouthers, Ralph right. and Minister King. I'm not. I, 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 hey, hey, can I come over your house? No. That's my wife. No. No, you're not going to, no, 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 no. I love you. You can't come over. You don't talk right. Amen? We are our word. So when somebody says, I give you my word, you are your word. Right? Are you healed? Then you're your word. Are you prosperous? Then you're your word. Can I get an Amen. All right, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Hallelujah, we're adding additives to our faith. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Temperance, self-control. So it is a fruit of the Spirit. Say that again. I have self-control. So temperance is an act of harnessing the desires and passions as we choose to conduct our Christian life in line with the leading of the Holy Ghost. So self-control let the Holy Ghost say, no, nah, you don't need that. You don't need to purchase that car right now. You don't need to go over here right now. Yeah, but I really, I, I remember years ago, me and Pastor Ann were working out, and man, I was hitting the gym hard at that time. And uh, she's like, honey, we, I think she didn't even want to go to the gym. I might have kind of urged her along a little too strongly. But anyway, the Holy Spirit said real soft, don't go to the gym. But I didn't have any self-control. Man, I was, I mean, I was going every day. Vitamins, everything. I mean, it's just like, you could show me protein powder and I would probably buy it. I was just out of control, you know. And um, Holy Spirit said, don't go to the gym. Real soft, just like that. I'm like, go to the gym every day. And I get on this machine with, was it five or 10 pounds? 10 pounds. You know, you do the fly like this. And I, I was showing Pastor Anna how to do it, and I let it go. And my whole shoulder just turned like this. And I heard a pop. And as dark as I am, I turned red. <laughs> and my, I said, look at Mom. I said, did you hear that? She said, no. Didn't I turn red? Turn red. So we leave the gym. And I said, Lord told me don't go. But I didn't have any self-control. He was trying to spare me that. Right? But my self-control, lack of self-control caused me an injury. Amen? So, 2 Peter 1.6. 2 Peter 1.6. So to self-control, we're going to add patience. If I'm repeating myself, just bear with me. Patience is a steadfastness, a constancy, a cheerful, check this out now, a what? Cheerful 
and hopeful endurance. Oh, endurance? Are you serious? Yes. You got to be fixed. You might have to be fixed in this position of constancy for a while. Which with God is there's no time. Why? Because, why can I be cheerful? Because I'm healed right now. Because I'm rich right now. When is faith? Now. When do I have it? That's the reason you can be cheerful. Because I got it right now. I'm in faith, so I already have my proof of it. Are y'all here? I already got it, so I can be cheerful, right? And I'm hopeful because I got my picture of what I'm after. Amen? Glory to God. The Lord told Pastor Philip some years ago that one of the most important things in his life was to be constant every day, every week, every year. Say that. I am patient every day, every week, and every year. So patience is cheerful, hopeful, and firmly fixed in place. Why? Because we already have the victory. Now thanks be unto God that always causes us to triumph. So we already have the victory. It's a thankful place or position. Patience is. That's where you get your praise on that. Right? That's where you get your praise on that. Because I know I have it, so I'm just being thankful. Right? I know my house is sold, so I'm just rejoicing. I'm just being thankful. I know my body's healed, so I'm just being thankful. I'm just rejoicing, right? I know my bank accounts are full, so I'm just being thankful. I'm just rejoicing. Praise God. It's a place to be thankful. It's a working power. A what kind of power? Working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Amen. Praise God. So if nothing seems to be moving, be patient. Rejoice. Don't be moved. Stay fixed on your faith goal. Praise God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Y'all still with me? So we're adding to the supernatural force. Now the enemy will even tell you that you're okay. You're okay. Right? And the Holy Spirit said, hey, stop being so critical. He had a nerve come tell me I was okay. But the Lord just told me that I need to change this. You know why? Because he knows that once I Straighten my love walk all the way out with the one that God has given me. He's in trouble. Right? So once we are perfectly mature together, we're unstoppable. He don't want that. Amen? What did I ask you to go, sir? There we go. So cast not away thy what? Which has what? Great recompense of reward. Next verse. For ye have need of. Woo, 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 we have need of patience. That after ye have what? Done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. See, we have need of patience. Because patience will keep you fixed. When you, when a, when a, when, if, if, if you tend to waver because it's been a minute, it's been a while, thanksgiving and praise and patience, it'll bring you back. It'll get you back. It'll help you out. Amen? I remember <clears throat> when um, I first got saved, and uh, it had been a while. I think 
Well, when I left the VA, it was probably about, I left the rehab at the VA, it was probably about five, six months. About five, six months. And uh, so I had to move back into the house where we live, which is drug-infested territory, downtown. You go out each door and buy drugs. And uh, man, fear gripped me. Because I was like, I know I don't want to do these drugs no more, but I don't have the confidence to go out the house. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And I was believing God that if my, I wasn't going to have these urges no more. My body was screaming for drugs. My thoughts were kind of like out of control, wanting more drugs and alcohol. But I'm going to believe in God that all this is going to cease. And uh, I'm confessing the scripture like a hundred. I know, I, I know at least a hundred times a day. And nothing seemed to be changing. Urges at times seemed to be getting stronger. Thoughts seemed to be getting worse. And um, I peeked in on her one morning. She was in there worshiping. You know the house we lived at on Main Street where you, we used to have small groups at? And, um, and I sensed the environment change. I said, woo. So she got on up and went to work. I didn't have to work that day. And I snuck in there. I said snuck with nobody else but me. <laughs> I said, I said we're going to school. <laughs> snuck with nobody else but me. And uh <laughs> and I just I just mimicked what she did, played the same music, everything. And man, he said, woof. I said, but I was crying. Right? He came to see me. And the strength that I, that I sensed and how much love I sensed, when I got up, I knew that I was going to be okay. But what it did for me was that it helped my faith stance. See, it had helped change how I saw myself. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, because at, at first I saw myself not being, not really being able to do it because I was still working through some garbage that I hadn't learned from being in a Baptist church. If you're Baptist, please don't be offended, okay? And I was kind of like working through that too. And it helped me change how I saw myself because I knew that he was with me. I knew where he had brought me from. So I just need to be patient, right? I just needed to know that it was going to happen or, in the, it, or that it had happened. Sure enough, I'd done that for about two or three weeks. And it was done. It was done. I did that. I, I, I spent time in the word, prayer, and, and praise and worship. It was done. The Lord gave her a dream that when I, I was, I was um, I had, it was two, like two big black figures, silhouettes or whatever had me in chains around my arms and my legs, and they took me into a courthouse. And, when I, and after a while, I came out the courthouse free. He gave her that dream at the same time. Patience. Say that, I am patient. So patience is key to us possessing the promises of God. We have need of patience. So um, let me see here. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. The next additive is one that we love, and that's love. Let's look at it in the Amplified, please, Brother Richard. So let's, let's, let's go to the last part of this verse. But only faith activated and energized, next verse, and expressed and working through what? Did you notice the, the four words? Go back, Pastor, uh, Mr., uh, Brother Richard. Faith what? This is what love does. Activated and energized and expressed 
and working. So it like supercharges faith. Faith worketh by love. Amen. So me whooping on everybody that came to the life center wasn't helping my faith. I was doing self-preservation, self-preservation and hurting and hurting my faith walk. Amen. Why? My faith, my uh, love have to, has to be developed. Just as faith has to be developed. I've been to the gym and there's been guys uh, in there, man, I'm talking like swole up. Arms, chest, back, you know, and then you look at their legs, you're like, bro. They got a squat machine here. You know, a squat machine is where you work your legs. Well, do you know that looks kind of funny? <laughs> Why? They didn't develop their legs. Right? We have to develop every part of our Christian life. Right? We can't just hear on prosperity. We have to hear on healing as well. Right? We have to be well-rounded saints, mature saints. So faith worketh by love. Love is the additive by which faith is dependent. Without it, faith is weak and ineffective. We talked about those four words in the operation of faith. It says that faith is activated, energized, expressed, and works through love. Now, once we put love and faith together, we are ready to see a change. Can you increase in love? I don't, I'm, I'm not dare saying that you're stuck in idle, and that may be what you need, but we can always increase in love. Where did faith come from? Who gave us love? Faith. God. God is Love. Amen. So we need to develop our love walk. Our love has to be developed to see strong faith. Maturing in love may not seem glory, glamorous because, again, you're dealing with people. But it's greater importance for growing because it will give us the opportunity to properly exercise our faith. Amen. It may be challenging, but again, may have you dealing with circumstances, people, but we have to keep our love stance. Amen. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm, I'm, forgive me. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2. Say that I walk in love. I am love. So y'all remember when uh, Miss Pat was here and she said that the Lord had her read that and put her name there? Have y'all done that? I did it. And I was like, whoa. Whoa. Was like, whoa. Especially when it says never fails. Right. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Amplified version, please, sir. And if I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purposes, and understand all the secret truths and mysteries, and possess all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody. So I say we need to develop in our love. Amen? Because it matures our faith. Um, 
Now, I'm going to tell you what maturing in love to a degree has done. It has helped me to be more freely to give. When I see somebody, you know, the Lord said, you know, you need to check that critical spirit. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a whole lot, but it's the small foxes that spoil the vines. Right? It's just, he said, you need to check that. Because what if he moves on my heart to share with somebody or tries to move on my heart to share with somebody that's less fortunate than me and I start criticizing? Right? It could save this guy's life or this lady's life that may be getting ready to spend eternity in hell because I got a critical spirit within me that I did nothing about. Are y'all still here? Love never fails. It didn't say love, forgive me. It says love never fails, not faith. But it says love. The God kind of love always works. But love supplied to it must be there. When love and faith are working together, faith will always work because love never fails. Amen? So let's stand on our feet. Will you help tonight? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Dave, just play something kind of soft. Everybody just lift your hands, close your eyes, and pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For your healing power of being at work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I want to agree with anybody that um, thinks that they may have, have become idle in their faith stance. that's you, just come on up and I'll agree with you. Pray with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you that you're working on their hearts. Thank you, Father, for the love that's shed abroad in their heart. Thank you, Lord, that the love that they are showing to those that do not know you, you said it's the goodness of God that caused sinners to repent. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for peace in our heart. No condemnation, but peace and joy. And thank you, Father, that that additive of patience and that additive of love is abounding and growing exceedingly. And that she will see the fruit from her faith stance. Loved ones saved. Body healed. In Jesus' name, be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. What's up, bro? That I, my daughter is with cancer. Okay. Father, I come into agreement with this brother who is standing in faith for his daughter who has cancer. So, Father, we speak to that cancer. And we tell it to go back to the pits of hell from which it came. 
And we call this daughter free, healed, restored. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Anybody else? Come on, y'all. Let's just lift our hands and rejoice and thank God for what's, what has just happened. Hallelujah. You need healing? Your body? About anything? What is this, sister? Sister Mary, what is it? Okay. My hands. Father. Thank you, Lord, for renewed strength. Thank you, Lord, for helping her <laughs> change things, Father, that will get her to the position that she needs to be. Lord, we bind the enemy from all these little schemes and attacks, and we plead the blood of Jesus over her, over her mind, and then over everything she puts her hands to. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come into agreement with this system. Thanking you, Lord, for redeeming her from all sickness and disease. Lord, all of those things that seem to come up, you come in now, come against it now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be restored. In the name of Jesus, be strengthened in Jesus' name. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He changed to me. Come on, sing that. You are my strength. Lift us with our hands. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. you, Lord, for being a healer. Thank you, Father, for being a deliverer. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for being a restorer. Thank you, Father, for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you go before us and make a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you, Father, that you are a God that you can make 
new body parts. You can make new hips. You can make new knees. You can free bodies of disease. And we thank you for it. 